Hey everyone, this is Neil once again from the Overclocker magazine. Welcome to the 13th gen core experience from the mini magazine called The Overclocker Presents the Intel 13th gen core experience. And the reason I call it an experience is because it's taken a while to get here. What the platform was like in the beginning, so that's six months ago, versus where it is now, it's very different. I will tell you that in the beginning, it was very clear that for the most part, that motherboards by and large were improved. And when I say improved, I'm talking not only about the features that were added courtesy of the chipset offering eight more PCI Gen 4 lanes and an additional 20 gigabits per second USB port, but I'm talking more in line with the overclocking of DDR5 memory. For instance, the Aorus Elite AX, the Z790 Aorus Elite AX rather, that motherboard is an entry-level board and yet it does support and works with DDR5-7600. Compare that with the 690 counterpart, you'll find that it's nowhere near there. And this is true for many other motherboards from different vendors as well. So not only were the 790 motherboards an improvement, but from then up until now as well, through various virus iterations and so forth, everything has improved. So where the platform is today versus where it was in October is quite a big difference, quite a big difference. And fortunately for us, it's all positive. The performance that you get right now from the 13th gen core CPUs versus in the beginning is so much better. And speaking to that point, again, I will point to memory compatibility. In the beginning, when I tested the 13900K, I couldn't get DDR5 8000 working on the ADI kit from G-Skill that I had. But given where we are right now, 8000 works without a problem. And this is on a four dim board. Try and get a four dim board from back then from 690 counterpart to work at 8000 easily. Yes, some people are able to, but, but for the most part, you're going to struggle with that. And yet it's so much easier doing it on the 790 board. And that is again, via way of virus updates and so forth. And speaking more about how the experience is getting better for 13th gen core. Right now I'm able to have better performance while drawing less power and not overwhelming my AIO in terms of temperatures than I was before. And the reason I'm able to do that is because not only do I understand the platform better, but the tuning options that have been made available to us through the BIOS updates from board vendors and so forth have added so many more features that we didn't have before. Because let's remember, when we first got the CPUs, everybody noted that you could run a simple Cinebench R23 test and you would hit 100 degrees and therefore the CPU would thermal throttle. And as a result of that, every single time you ran Cinebench R23, you would see the performance would degrade. Budget boards like the Aorus Elite Z790AX, there's a new feature that was added recently with the F3i BIOS, I believe. So it has spec in hands, it has instant 6 gigahertz, and it has another optimization option. I forgot about it. But basically, all of these work to do something very similar, which is to curb the thermal throttling, but at the same time, increase performance for you. Now, in light of this, I always like to get involved in the tuning of my system. And as a result, being able to tune the 13th gen core CPUs in the way that I'm able to right now speaks directly to just how much work Intel has put into these CPUs. For instance, you will see that in the graphs that I present to you throughout this entire uh, video, that there's the uh, reference results that I had with just what you get with the CPU. If you just buy a CPU and use any of the motherboards and just run the benchmarks, that's DDR5 5600 per specification CL28. But if you tune the system, you are actually able to get better performance, draw less power, but actually not experience thermal throttling as well. But something very interesting that is only revealed on the more high end boards like the Maxima Z790 Extreme is that you are able to actually tune the e cores individually in terms of how much voltage you are providing to each one of them. And when I was able to do that, I was able to reduce the amount of voltage given to each e core by I think about 85 millivolts. And just being able to do that across all the e cores allowed me even more thermal headroom, meaning that I could extract even more performance from the CPU. And this speaks to a feature that's already there on the 13th gen core CPU. So it's not introduced by the motherboard, but exposed by the motherboard. So that's what I mean when I talk about my 13th gen core experience. Everything has improved in terms of tuning and extracting the best from the CPU. So I want to talk to you about the 13600K specifically because this is the one CPU that I actually did try with Sub-Zero cooling. Now, this was done, what, two months in? 
when the cpu and the platform had just released and the results that i was putting out were not really that great yes they're in line with what you would expect from 6.3 gigahertz but i can tell you for certain that if i had to do that same exercise today i would get significantly better results and also 7000 or 7200 cl30 vdr5 frequency was the best i could do then but now with f3g bios which i didn't have at the time i'm able to do 7600 reliably and even 7800 now would you want to overclock these cpus of course you would because we have such powerful gpus these days and i'm talking specifically the rtx 4090 and to a lesser degree the rtx 4080 because yes if you're running 4k the gpu is going to be the limitation but most people are not running 4k unfortunately so we are still running resolutions lower than that and at the lower resolutions you want as much cpu grant as possible and what speaks to us still needing more cpu grunt is just how well these cpus scale with dram frequency i mean i went from the reference ddr5 5600 on the 3900k to just 7600 and in guardians of the galaxy at 1080p the average frame rate went from 228 frames per second to 259 frames per second that is a huge difference when we're just talking about dram frequency or dram tuning so in light of that you do want to be overclocking the 13600k as well or even the 3900k to get the most out of that cpu and fortunately we can do that now with just without just adding more power or more voltage and sacrificing the entire system just so that we can get more performance so what we have right now is the most tunable platform with the most performance and with the most frequency headroom and when we're talking frequency headroom i mean you saw it for yourself in fact you can even see it in the magazine where this video is as well that the usual suspects over at the uh asus labs were able to get nine gigahertz out of the 13900k i think elmo and the rest of the team got 9008 megahertz out of the cpu which is just staggering so that is my experience with intel 13th gen core and in the six months that i've had it with all the motherboards that i've reviewed and so forth i have seen this platform improve to where it is right now where it is by far my favorite platform and literally the most tunable platform that i've ever come across and with that said remember to share like subscribe leave your comments below and i'll see you guys on the flip side take care and peace